Hi, I'm Steve Fox. This video covers a summary of U.S. tax rules related to passive foreign investment companies, or PFIX. In the video are links to other videos that provide more details. Here's what we'll cover. For an in-depth technical article, check my website, sfoxcpa.com. The PFIC rules apply to U.S. persons, that is, individuals, corporations, estates, and trusts who are U.S. resident or U.S. citizens. So what's a PFIC, and why should you care? A PFIC is a foreign corporation that meets either a 50% passive asset test or a 75% passive gross income test. PFIC status is relevant only for U.S. persons who own an equity interest in that corporation. It's irrelevant to depositors, account holders, or non-U.S. persons. Brokerage accounts, even with a foreign firm, are not shares of a PFIC but you may hold shares of a PFIC through that account. A U.S. person who owns more than $25,000 worth of PFIC shares at year end must file Form 8621 with his, her, or its tax return. Here's a link to a short video with more details of defining what's a PFIC. A foreign mutual fund or investment company is almost always a PFIC. Some other foreign corporations may also be PFIX. U.S. individuals and U.S. corporations that own shares of such a company, either directly or through a partnership, estate, or trust, are subject to the PFIC rules. PFIC was enacted to induce U.S. persons to treat income through foreign mutual funds like income through U.S. mutual funds. There are three possible effects of PFIC, and a U.S. person gets to choose which will apply. Here are the three. QUEF, or Qualified Electing Fund. This is what Congress wants you to choose to mimic the treatment of U.S. mutual funds. Mark to market. Some years ago, Congress also added a second option to recognize gain each year as if the PFIC shares were sold or recognize loss up to the amount of gain previously recognized. Tax and interest. If the shareholder doesn't elect either QUEF or mark to market, then a tax plus interest regime applies. Under this, Tax on any larger than average distributions and on any gain is imposed as if the distributions or gain happened over the full period of ownership. This tax is at the top tax rate, not graduated rates. Interest is charged as if the tax were a prior year assessment. In addition, shareholders get foreign tax credits the same as they would for other distributions or sales of shares. However, for PFIX, the rules are applied differently. A U.S. person who owns shares of a PFIC can elect to treat the PFIC as a qualified electing fund or a QUEF. Under a QUEF election, the shareholder includes in his, her, or its income each year the share of the fund's ordinary income and the share of the fund's capital gain for the year. This share is computed as if the fund had distributed the full amount of each to its shareholders. The shareholder then gets an increase in basis in the shares, so things are counted only once. This mimics the treatment for U.S. mutual funds. This share is computed as if the fund had distributed the full amount of each to its shareholders. The shareholder then gets an increase in basis in the shares, 
so that things are counted only once. This mimics the treatment for U.S. mutual funds. An election of QEF status is made by the shareholder on Form 8621. The fund must consent to the election and agree to provide information each year to the shareholder. One shareholder's election does not affect anyone else. The QEF election is made just once and continues each year. Alternatively, a shareholder may elect once to mark the shares of the PFIC to market each year. Under this election, the shareholder recognizes gain each year to the extent the fair market value of those shares exceeds basis. The shareholder then gets an increase in basis in the shares. If the value declines in a year, the shareholder recognizes loss and basis is reduced but loss is limited to the gains previously recognized. Any gain or loss is treated as ordinary income, not capital gains. Any distributions are recognized as dividends. Marked market is only available for publicly traded shares. The election is made on Form 8621 and continues each year. If the shareholder doesn't elect either QEF or marked market effective when he, she, or it first acquires the shares, then a tax and interest regime applies. This can be quite harsh. It applies to any gain on any disposition of the shares, as well as the portion of any distribution in excess of 125% of the average of the prior three years' distributions. This amount is apportioned among all the days the shareholder held the PFIC shares. Amounts apportioned to the current year, pre-1987 years, and any years a QEF or mark-to-market election applied are included in current year income and taxed normally. All other amounts are carved out of current year income and subject to tax at the maximum regular tax rate for the year to which they're apportioned. Then, interest is added to this tax as if the tax were due in the prior year but not paid until the current year's return. These and the current year tax are due with the taxpayer's tax return. Here's a link to a video discussing the tax and interest regime with an example. The computations under this regime can be complex and the results very unpleasant. Shareholders of a corporation may get foreign tax credits with respect to taxes withheld on distributions or with respect to the underlying tax of the corporation. General rules for these credits are covered in the foreign tax credit videos. However, for PFIC shares subject to the tax and interest regime, there are special rules that apply. In addition, there are rules preventing a controlled foreign corporation from being a PFIC for years after 1997. Note that these so-called overlap rules do not apply to any day before 1998 or any day the particular shareholder was not a 10% or more shareholder. So it's possible to have shares that are treated as PFIC for some days and as CFC for other days. U.S. persons who own shares of a PFIC must file Form 8621. Basic information must be provided about the PFIC in all cases. Where nothing but the QEF inclusion is happening, the form is pretty simple. You just disclose basic information about the PFIC and your shares of ordinary income and capital gain. It's also fairly simple for mark to market. Here's a link to a video with details on Form 8621. 
Finally, there are rules for PFIX owned through partnerships, estates, and trusts. The PFIC rules, including QEF, mark-to-market, and tax and interest regime, apply directly to partners in a partnership or beneficiaries in an estate or trust for their portion of the shares. Thus, any ordinary income or capital gain inclusions flow through. The available elections are made by the partnership estate or trust if it is a U.S. partnership estate or trust. They're made by the partners or beneficiaries if the partnership estate or trust is foreign. Flow-through also applies to shareholders of S-corporations, and the S-corporations make the elections. Let's recap the key aspects of PFIC. PFIC rules apply only to U.S. citizens, U.S. resident individuals, and domestic corporations. The rules apply only to those who own shares of a foreign corporation that meets either a 75% passive income test or a 50% passive asset test. Such corporation is a PFIC. The shareholder has a choice of three different treatments. Under the QEF option, the shareholder recognizes currently his, her, or its share of the PFIX ordinary income or capital gains. Under the mark-to-market option, the shareholder treats the shares much as if sold at year-end and purchased again the next day. Absent one of these, a tax and interest regime applies that may substantially increase tax. Regardless of the treatment, Form 8621 is required every year for U.S. persons who own more than $25,000 worth of PFIC shares. For an in-depth technical article, check my website, sfoxcpa.com. For more information on other tax topics, check out the International Tax Channel on YouTube. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for learning with me.